We continue our reading of God's Dream for You, the Chosen, a morning devotional by author Dwight K. Nelson. Today's reading, October 20, Star Rising Over Islam, Part 4. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who were not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. Romans 15, 20 and 21. So, what shall we do? How shall we respond? First, we can reject the belittling, berating language adopted by some in the West. The epithet, Islamofascist, demeans an entire people and religion on account of a radical minority. How would we like it if someone coined the words Christofascist and Adventistofascist? Every religion has its fanatical minority, but to call a religion satanic because of extremists is hardly a manifestation of the Christian golden rule. Second, there is one community of faith on earth that is positioned to bridge God's final appeal to all monotheistic religions. It is perfectly positioned to reach Christendom for this community of faith is the heart of Christianity recovered in, the Bi- in all the Bible truths. It is perfectly positioned to reach the Jewish world, for as we noted in August, this community of faith is essentially Judaism with the Messiah. And this same community of faith is perfectly positioned to reach Islam, for with Muslims it embraces the one God of Abraham, and his teachings in the sacred book. With them, it champions the body temple of Allah, where neither pork nor alcohol shall reside. With them, refusing to bow down to idols, with them, serving the poor of earth in works of mercy, with them, passionately praying morning and noon and night to God, and with them acknowledging the mighty final judgment of God, after which Jesus of Nazareth will return. Seventh-day Adventists have been raised up by God for such a time as this. As a vital bridge to all three monotheistic communities, and now more than ever it is clear that the divine mission includes our Muslim neighbors, colleagues, and communities around us. Third, let us begin to pray for the vast regions of Islam that one day will be lighted with Revelation 18.1's final burst of divine glory. Some of us reading these words right now will answer our own prayers, becoming cross-cultural bridge builders for God in a Muslim community somewhere on earth. Others of us will support financial, will provide financial support for organizations seeking to skillfully, sensitively communicate the everlasting gospel. Paul's ambition in today's text is bold and clear. It's okay to be passionate about mobilizing God's truth to all. This concludes our reading today of God's Dream for You, and if you have heard this, please send me a message to let me know that you did listen. Thank you so much.